Imagine a system in which a private company, as a government service provider, offers you protection of life, liberty, and property. This service includes internal and external security, a legal and regulatory framework, and independent dispute resolution. You pay a contractually fixed fee for these services per year. The government service provider, as the operator of the community, cannot unilaterally change this citizen's contract with you later on. As a contract citizen, you have a legal claim to compliance and a claim for damages in the event of malperformance. You take care of everything else by yourself, but you can also do whatever you want, limited only by the rights of others and the other moderate rules of living together. Disputes between you and the government service provider are heard in independent arbitration courts, as is customary in international commercial law. If the operator ignores the arbitral awards or abuses his power in another way, his customers leave and he goes bankrupt. He therefore has an economic risk and therefore an incentive to treat his customers well and in accordance with the contract. This system is called Free Private City. At first glance, it may seem outrageously radical or utopian. However, we are already using the service approach very successfully in other areas of our lives. The transfer to our social order is only the last step in a development already underway. What is new is that coexistence in this system takes place on a purely private basis, but the system is nevertheless able to provide all those services, especially security, requested by residents of previous states, and indeed better, cheaper, and with far greater degrees of freedom for customers, the contract citizens. Since participation in the free private city is voluntary, the concept must be permanently attractive, Otherwise, no one will come or the residents will leave again. Especially, the design as a service contract has the advantage that it has already been tested and proven. It corresponds to what we know from the private businesses of everyday life, be it the purchase of bread from the baker, the conclusion of an insurance policy, or the appointment of a tax consultant. A reciprocal, mutually agreed contract is always the basis. It regulates which product or service is to be supplied at what conditions and at what price. This applies even if the contract, as with the baker, only came about through implicit action. The buyer knows that his contractual partner has an economic interest. He does not have to pretend to be motivated by either the common good or the rescue of humanity. In a free private city, everyone is the sovereign of himself who, by voluntary agreement, has concluded a genuine contract with a more or less ordinary service provider, the citizen's contract. Both parties have the same formal rights and are therefore legally on an equal footing. The relationship between authority and subject is replaced by the relationship between customer and service provider. In contrast to conventional systems, where the citizen is obliged to pay tax without having a corresponding right to benefits, in a free private city, service and consideration are directly related. Both contracting parties are entitled to fulfillment of the contract. That is, the operator can demand payment of the fixed contribution from the contract's citizen, but no additional fees. In turn, the contract citizen can sue the operator for compliance with his contractual obligations. For example, by ensuring security and a functioning system of civil law. Who is currently in charge of the operating company or to whom it belongs is of no relevance for the functioning of the model. A free private city is therefore not a utopia, but rather a business idea whose functional elements are already known and which need only be transferred to another sector, namely that of living together. Basically, as a service provider, the operator only provides the framework within which the society can develop openly in the sense of a spontaneous order.